Hey there everybody, this is a video for my grade 11 applied math students and this is us starting chapter 3 solving acute triangles. Now we actually did start chapter 3 by reviewing some grade 10 Sokotoa. So let me just move over here and remind, well wait, I don't want to do that, hold on. Let me just move over here, there we go, and remind people about uh, uh, good old right angle trigonometry from grade 10 from the MEAP course. If you don't remember how to find missing sides and missing angles if, uh, using sine, cosine, and tangent, also known, of course, as SOKOTOA, then I highly, highly recommend that you go back to this page right here, which is the FRC web video archive. Take a second to pause and jot that uh, or copy and uh, type in that, that web address and go to either the button here for grade 10 or the button here for grade 10. And then when you call that up, there it is in chapter two, you can relearn how to do tangent and sine and cosine. And I would really recommend you go through these videos and practice. If you can't do Sokotoa grade 10 trigonometry with right angles, the stuff we're about to do is not gonna go your way, I'm quite sure. So. With that out of the way, the other thing to remind you is, of course, there's two other things about right triangles that you already know. You know about Pythagoras' theorem, right? Pythagoras, uh, where it says that uh, this, of course, the hypotenuse has to be the C in this formula. So hypotenuse squared equals A squared and B squared. And it doesn't matter which of the two legs you call A and B. And there's one other fact about triangles that you maybe remember. And this is all triangles, not just right triangles. If you add up all their angles, you get 180 degrees. This is something that popped up in chapter two. So all right, we're ready to go. Chapter three, here's how we're gonna start. This video, we're just going to actually learn where our new formula comes from. And our new formula is gonna allow us to do trigonometry even if our triangles don't have right angles in them, which is pretty darn cool. So we're gonna start by just defining what the sine law is. And I'm just gonna kind of write this out. I'll pause the video so that you don't have to watch me write and then you can just pause the video and jot down the notes. So uh, let me just uh, quickly pause the video here. Okay, and we're back, and here's what I wrote. Sine law is a formula that allows you to solve for unknown sides and angles in an oblique triangle. Do we remember from last unit what an oblique triangle is? Oblique triangles means they don't have right angles in them given that you know the measure of an angle and its opposite side. So that's the definition of what sine law is. Next, we're going to actually show where it comes from. So if you look down the page in your booklet, you have this, this triangle that could be any old triangle. It's supposed to be an acute triangle, so this angle up here has to be less than 90 degrees. It's not a right triangle, it's oblique, so this is less than 90 degrees, acute triangle. And what we want you to do is we want you to, of course, consider triangle ABC, and there we go, we're looking at it, we're considering it, and we're going to, for our very first step, construct height H from corner B to side AC. So, we're going to drop down the height and in a, in a triangle, when you, when you conduct, sorry, construct a height, what you do is you actually make right angles with the base that you join to the opposite corner. So I just promised you we were going to do some trigonometry without right triangles, but as you can see, we have to kind of start by thinking about right triangles. And notice I've turned this big acute triangle into two right triangles. And somebody, uh, when I did this with the class, said, well, and they're equal, too. I was like, well, they look like it in this picture, but honestly, I don't know for sure. Nobody's told me that A and C are the same size, so I don't know that it was an isosceles triangle to begin with, which would be the only way that this could possibly have a left and right triangle that are identical. So I don't know that they're identical, but what I do know is that now that I have right triangles, I can find an expression from my Sokotoa knowledge in grade 10 for the sine of angle A. Remember that the sine of angle A is the opposite, which I'm going to call height H. So it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, it's going to be H over C. And then over on the right-hand triangle, I'm going to say that the sine of angle C is H over A. 
right? From this angle here, it's opposite divided by hypotenuse. So there we go. Again, if that isn't something you remember how to do, go back and review some grade 10 or you're going to be very lost this unit. Okay. Well, I don't really want a formula with H in it. H is something that I added to this picture. I did, it wasn't part of the original picture. So I'm going to do some algebra. I'm going to times both sides of this equation by C and then rewrite it. Just write it backwards as H is equal to C times the sine of angle A. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this one. H is equal to A times the sine of angle C. Again, I just use the algebra move of timesing both sides of the equation by A. On this side, it cancels, and then that side, now it's, it's right there. And now think about this. We learned this back in unit one. If this height is equal to that expression and the same height is equal to that expression, then those two expressions must equal each other. We call that, of course, the transitive property of reasoning. Remember that from chapter one? So we can say that C times the sine of angle A is equal to A times the sine of angle C. And we're going to take this little formula we've created into two directions. In one direction, I'm going to leave A on top and then write the formula backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave A on top, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the sine of angle A, which would cancel it on this side and leave it underneath side A. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the sine of angle C, leaving C on top and the sine of angle C on the bottom. If you don't quite have the algebra wherewithal to understand how I went from this line to this line, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It was a choice for me to put the A and the C on top. I could have left the angles on top. In fact, that's what I'm going to do also. I'm going to say that sine of angle A, if I leave that here and divide both sides of the equation by, by side C and side A, the formula is now going to look like this. So I now have a cool relationship between A and the sine of angle A and C and the sine of angle C that I can also write upside down and have the angles on top. And please notice that it was kind of just an arbitrary choice to put the height this way. I could have put the height this way and done all of the same logic and calculations for this height. And then I would have come up with, let's see, that would have been angle B and, and, and angle C. I would have found out that I could say that B over the sine of B is equal to C over the sine of C. And once again, I can say, well, with transitive property, if C over sine of C equals this, and C equals sine of uh, C equals that, then all three of these ratios must equal each other. So I'm going to just say, similarly, I can say that this formula is a three-part ratio. And this is the way you're going to see it on your formula sheet for this course. Whoops, and then I just goofed it up sine of angle C. So there's, there's the way I'd use the formula if I'm looking for a side. And here's the way I'd use the formula if I'm looking for an angle. And that's where we'll draw this video to a conclusion. We've just proven or derived our formula for the law of signs. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to use it.